Fight fans, it's your main man, made man, back at it again. And y'all know how I get down. We talking boxing. There is a man in the sport of boxing, ladies and gentlemen, that I have tremendous, I repeat, tremendous respect for. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Ever since roughly 2004, I have been keeping my eyes on the boxer, the fighter, the warrior known as Miguel Cotto, ladies and gentlemen. The Puerto Rican sensation. Hands down, a warrior, possible Hall of Fame. What, first Puerto Rican fighter to uh, win, what, four titles in four different divisions or something of that nature, whatever. Big time name. A lot of tremendous respect for Miguel Cotto. I remember 2004 when he defeated Love Morton and Dow back then, going on a, 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 a hell of a resume streak, fighting fighters such as Randall Bailey, Paulie Malinaji, Demarcus Chop Chop Corley, Shane Mosley, Zab Zuda, uh, Alfonso Gomez, Joshua Claudia in his prime, Manny Pacquiao, Yuri Foreman, an undefeated Yuri Foreman, in which he took the the welterweight title away from Yuri Foreman, very, you know, remember the Margarito fights, and then the second one, once the world found out Margarito was actually Margarito, and he wrapped his hands with the fucking cash shit, and so the redemption for Miguel Cotto to come back and beat the shit out of Margarito and, 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 and redeem himself, you know what I mean, it was a beautiful thing to watch. Um, you know, he even once went up against Floyd Mayweather, Austin Trout. Even though he lost those fights, he jumped in the ring with those guys. Those were two hot fighters at that time also. So, Miguel Cotto is always, I repeat, always been a warrior. Never ran away from shit, man. So, when we get to this fight that was supposed to have been scheduled between Miguel Cotto and Saul Canelo Alvarez, and we hear that this fight breaks down for really no major reason given other than the fact that we hear from Bob Arum that... Miguel Cotto was, what, offended or something shit uh, from uh, Saul Canelo Alvarez sending letters to Puerto Rican newspapers trying to get this fight and calling out Cotto, and that's not how you get a fight with Cotto. What the fuck does Cotto think he is? You know, that's how, that's how any fighter gets a fight. They, they call you out in the public, you know what I mean? That's how it goes. But anyway, um, and it seems as if this fight has been now officially off as if uh, Golden Boy and uh, Saul Canelo Alvarez is looking to pivot and try to get a fight with James Kirkland and they're hopefully they're trying to get that May 2nd date but I still don't think they'll get it but anyway uh, they're, they're trying to get a fight with James Kirkland they pivot away from Miguel Cotto given that Miguel Cotto has been holding out all of this time now we know Saul Canelo Alvarez said he'll give up the house if you know anything about Saul Canelo Alvarez, you know he is a prideful fighter, which is he's seeming like he wants to fight the best names out there. Fuck all the speculated stipulations and all the bullshit negotiations. He's willing to give up the house to Miguel Cotto. Give him anything he wants. You want the ring? You can have the ring. The location. You come out first. You choose the gloves. You get the bigger cut. Whatever the fuck. Even though I think personally Miguel uh, Saul Canelo Alvarez's fan base is bigger than Cotto's. But Cotto is roughly about the third what pay-per-view rated guy, you know what I mean? So the fact still remains is that he was a side. So Saul Canelo Alvarez, like I said before, if you know anything about him, he's a humble dude. He doesn't mind being B-side. He doesn't mind giving whatever he needs to give up just to get a shot at you in that motherfucking ring with that title, you know what I mean? So big ups to Saul Canelo Alvarez. But the fact still remains, there has been rumors why this fight has broken down. Some say uh, Floyd Mayweather possibly stepped in and to get them off that May 2nd date thing and you know because there's only one other fight possibly in boxing that would have been bigger than say Mayweather and Pacquiao on May 2nd and that is Miguel Cotto and Saul Canelo Alvarez uh, the, the, the so called future of boxing with the biggest fan base in Saul Canelo Alvarez and of course the number 3 pay per view guy in Miguel Cotto you know what I mean he packs Madison Square Garden every time he fights there so he does a pretty good thing but the fact still remains is that this fight fell apart. Now, I haven't been really two seconds off Miguel Cotto's ass ever since the Martinez fight. I, I have, you know, I'm a big time Sergio Martinez fan. There's not, and I do this show non fucking biased, ladies and gentlemen. So I try not to get too involved in that. But, you know, when he did the Sergio Martinez handicapping him through the negotiations, all the bullshit, uh, uh, you know, propositions that was made for Miguel Cotto in, in order for him to, uh, to take the fight with Martinez, you know, all the bullshit that went down with that fight really put a bad taste in my mouth for fucking Miguel Cotto. Now, prior to that, given the Delvin Rodriguez fight, he, he needed that fight because he was coming off two back-to-back -back losses to Mayweather as well as Austin Trout. Now, even back then, Miguel Cotto was pondering retirement, you know what I mean? He's 34 years of, old, years of age now. These fights occurred in 2012, so what, he was... 
roughly 31, maybe 32. So he was really willing to retire then at a young age, you know what I mean, after the defeat to Sergio, I mean, after the, the defeat to uh, Austin Trout. So then he goes along and gets the two gimme fights, uh, the, the, the Rodriguez fight, which most predicted him to win, and then turn around and get the, the fight with Sergio and gets the 160-pound world championship, but he fights a diminished diminished fighter, you know what I mean? So, uh, but big ups to Sergio Martinez for showing heart for that fight. But the thing is this, a lot of people are starting to think, you know, is Cotto declining? You know what I mean? Is he, you know, we know the last time he stepped in, in on an even more so playing field with someone of his class or of his caliber, he look, didn't look as, you know, Miguel Cotto-ish, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, the thing is that people are looking at this fight and the only other reason other than that Floyd Mayweather theory that's a theory and it's nothing but pure rumor, no evidence involved, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happened. But, you know, other than that, the only reason that you can give for him not fighting Saul Canelo Alvarez, ladies and gentlemen, was the fact, and I hate to say this, he was fucking scared, you know what I mean? The man had just won this 160-pound WBA title, ladies and gentlemen. So, I mean, WBC title. So, of course... Fresh off winning it from Sergio Martinez, he's not in no fucking hurry to possibly either lose it or take a fight where is it he's not getting something out of the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Miguel Cotto is just like Floyd Mayweather in a way, which we had um, Money Mayweather now, and then we had Pretty Boy Floyd before, in which Pretty Boy Floyd took on all comers. Money Mayweather is an opportunist. Same way for Miguel Cotto, ladies and gentlemen. Miguel Cotto is looking to check out, so he is more of an opportunist. Saul Canelo Alvarez, if you think about that fight, ladies and gentlemen, from Miguel Cotto's standpoint, if he beats Saul Canelo Alvarez, Saul Canelo, what does he get from that? What does he win from that? Recognition? He's had that. He's been there. He's done that. What does he get from that? You know what I mean? But if he loses to Saul Canelo Alvarez, that is the end, so possibly, of Miguel Cotto because people will use, oh, you fought a diminished fighter and Martinez, oh, you... Uh, you know, Delvin Rodriguez wasn't, you know, he wasn't an uh, A, B level ca caliber fighter. The last two good fighters you fought, you lost to. So now you get in here with Canelo and you lose to him. That could be the end, possibly, honestly, of Miguel Cotto, ladies and gentlemen. So at least as a, a an elite premier fighter, you know, not to say anything about what he's done before this point. Like I said, he's, a, he's to me, he's Hall of Fame worthy, possibly. So, you know, but the fact still remains, people will say that this is possibly the end of Miguel Cotto because he's been avoiding top level contenders uh, on an even playing field for quite some time, you know what I mean, roughly since, like I said, 2012. So now, you know, I also bring up the fact that um, I look at it and I say to myself, Cotto, is he, he must be looking for an easy fight because we haven't heard him even remotely whisper the letters G, G, G. Gennady Golovkin, ladies and gentlemen, has an upcoming fight, of course, with Martin Murray, in which most boxing minds and consensus is he will walk through Martin Murray like a hot knife through butter, you know what I mean? But the thing that's interesting about that fight is the fact that Triple G is the interim champion to Miguel Cotto's WBC belt. He is also the WBA middleweight champion, super middleweight champion, whatever the fuck that means. But he is the WBA super middleweight champion. Martin Mary is the number one contender to the WBC title. So if Triple G defeats Martin Mary as most expected, Miguel Cotto almost has nowhere else to turn in the WBC division other than Triple G. Now, if you're not talking Triple G, you're not talking Saul Canelo Alvarez, who the fuck are you talking? Who are you talking? The last time I checked, the IBF world champion was what? Fucking Jermaine Taylor. I don't even know if they stripped him yet. I think they have. I'm not 100%. But who are you talking? Take in mind, ladies and gentlemen, the 160-pound division, quite honestly, is not the most strongest division in boxing. It's an actual fairly easy division to conquer, you know what I mean? But who is he talking? I looked at the, the, the guys who rank in that same, the WBC contenders, and you look at the names that are there, I mean, you got David Lemieux as the number two guy, you got Jorge Sebastian Helian as number four, Billy Joe Saunders, I mean, as number three, you have Billy Joe Saunders as number four, and you have Toriano Johnson as number five. So basically, if, for some crazy reason, neither one, the Saul Canelo Alvarez nor the Triple G fight happens for Miguel Cotto, there's possibly a good chance that those last few names that I just named can possibly be a fight for Miguel Cotto. 
I don't know what he gets out of it other than the fact he does retain his title. He goes on to have bigger fights and he stays relevant. But the fact remains, you know, no one wants to see it. And Cotto will be ridiculed very heavily if he ducks Saul Canelo Alvarez and does not take a fight with Triple G. We know Peter Quillen has an upcoming fight with Andy Lee, ladies and gentlemen. So those are two top names at the, at the 160 division, but they are tied up. So who are we talking here? Who are we talking? Remind me again. Who are we talking? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, Daniel Jacobs. Daniel Jacobs is the WBA interim champion as well, or is he the WBA champion? I don't know how the thing works. But the fact is, he's another name, and he's waiting in the wings. I would love for them to announce a Cotto, you know, Daniel Jacobs. However, you know, I don't think Daniel Jacobs, he's even ranked at all by the WBC. So, I don't know how that works. But the fact still remains, those are, those are the only fights possibly at 160. If it ain't Daniel Jacobs, if it ain't Peter Quilling, Andy Lee, um, maybe Corball, I don't know, but, uh, uh, Triple G. Saul Canelo Alvarez, these are the premier guys at 160. Those are the only names that can be mixed around with Miguel Cotto. Now, Miguel Cotto, some say he's not a true 160 guy, which is true, possibly. You notice he wanted to fight Saul when they were discussing it at a catch weight. But the thing is this, you know, if you're a fucking 160 champ, you're fighting 160-pound fighters, man. Fuck all this catch weight shit, you know what I mean? Maybe the other guys at 160 that's not fighting Cotto at a fucking catch weight, you know what I mean? I don't know, but the fact still remains... Was more important than anything, if you're not talking Saul Canelo Alvarez, Cotto, you better be talking Triple G. Bottom fucking line. Because anybody outside of those two, Quillen, Lee, they're fighting each other, Daniel Jacobs, those are the only other possibilities, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the only other possibilities. They're semi-popular fighters as well. So, those are the only possibilities. If, if Cotto does not take a premier fight of those caliber in his next fight... Ladies and gentlemen, we have an obligation as boxing fans to call out Miguel Cotto for being a fucking coward. Bottom line, you know what I mean? And I don't mean to say that lightly because talking like that about Miguel Cotto is not something I, 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 I'm I, happy to do. You know what I mean? I'm not really in. But it's no other fucking word for it. Opportunist, maybe. But cowardice is the only one that really comes to mind. Triple G is right there, ladies and gentlemen. After this Martin Murray fight, the heat is going to be turned up on Miguel Cotto. To the next video, it's your main man, Made Man. I'll see y'all then. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm on Twitter at MadeMan511. Let's see what, how it go.